do want to talk about um I do I do want to talk about Africa because um we did make some some news as far as um appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um so I think that that's an important business lesson in investing and that kind of ties in with the international business play. Mm -hmm. Um so first I want to say how this came about because there's a lesson in it. And um, you know, a lot of times people say like, don't say anything until you actually have done it because you're going to end up, you know, sabotaging you've heard, it. You've heard that before, right? Yeah. There's, there's, some, there's some level of truth to that, I guess. It's nuanced conversation, but it is vitally important to express your ideas to people that can help you because a closed mouth doesn't get fed. And sometimes the more you talk about things, you create, you create energy powers in the tongue. We'll talk about it on Wednesday as well. Unfortunately, you know, with Dirk, that situation, you know, he said some things and that actually looks like it came true. What he actually said. Right. So you can, you can speak, you can speak positivity into your life or you can speak negativity into your life. We saw it with big, we saw it with pot life after death, ready to die. Like, you know, you, you keep speaking these things and, you know, unfortunately, eventually it happens. Right. Um, so I say that to say, um, this over a year ago, right. This idea of like, you know, people go to Ghana and they go for like, you know, they party. Right. And it's turned into like a festival almost every December, which is great. It's dope. Mm -hmm. But it's like, OK, how sustainable is that like long term? Right. And there are some people that have done like different development, real estate, like homes and stuff like that. But I was thinking like, what if there was actually like a real community for people from the diaspora? to come mm -hmm. to actually live if they want to full time or just have a home there. Right. But now you've actually created a community where you actually are helping the ecosystem because now you're actually, you know, you, after December is over, you're there, you're buying mm -hmm. groceries, you're doing, if you're not there, you, you're renting it out, Airbnb. Um, you know, you're just adding more to it as opposed to just coming and just getting drunk for six days and just going home. Right. I don't think that that's the vision, what they said, like they wanted people to come back to Africa. Like, yeah, that wasn't the the idea, right? So it was just like, yo, this just be just really dope if there was like a a place for people to come back to, and people from America mixed with people from local people as well. So you you have the amenities of what you would be used to living like in America, right? And but you still get the cultural experience of living in Ghana. So he spoke to a variety of different people, and then I was just telling everybody about this. So one person I told about this actually was in a position to help mm -hmm. and it's probably the least the least person that you would expect from a business standpoint but that's why you can never you, you never know never yeah judge your book by cover shaka bar shout out to him shaka. somebody who if you follow him like you said i don't i don't think anybody looks at shaka bars as like he's the business person right he's a, he's an activist he's an activist he, he's a, he is an entrepreneur but i'm just saying like he's an activist that's what his his main thing is is fighting for you know, people that are disenfranchised, people in Africa, people all around the world, right? That's his thing. He's a, he's an activist. Mm -hmm. But I was telling him about this idea, so it just so happened that he knew some guys. Shout out to Kwame Alvin, who was in Ghana, who actually had a similar vision, but they already had the infrastructure in place. So when we went out there, we linked with them in person, and they took us around, and they already had like the land. They already had the construction. These guys are like doing their thing heavy yeah. in real estate like polo beach club like they beachfront like they really at the highest like, level mm -hmm. now they got it like mm -hmm. they got it on lock out there crazy so we link with them and then it's like yo yeah they want to they want to they wanna bring the diasporans that's why like i don't really get caught up in narratives a lot of time people you got to be careful with people here like yo the africans they don't really care about us anyway it's like i mean of course there's always a person that or people like but you can't lump a whole group of people in these people is extremely successful they got a lot of money right and they yeah. like they, they want to bridge the, the gap between america north america and ghana we mm -hmm. in a we in america and we like we want to bridge the gap like some people are like well we never came from africa we we indians okay i, I don't i don't really that's not important to me if you want to 
go to Africa, you can go. It's like if you want to go to Dubai, you don't got to be from Dubai to go to Dubai. You don't have to yep. be from Mexico. You live in, you don't got to be from Mexico. You don't got to be okay. from Thailand to go there. It's like, you know, I don't really get caught up in arguing. Everybody that's arguing is broke. I say it again. Hold on. <laughs> True, say it. I'm not arguing. I'm just blocking you. My thing this year, I'm not arguing with you. I'm blocking you. They're like, yo, we didn't come from Africa. We came from the Cherokee tribe. And I, I'm Never. not. I don't care. It does, I don't care. But if there was a Pangea and then it split. I don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> what are you way. talking about? Yeah. If you don't want to go, then don't go. Don't, I, I don't, I'm not tripping off of it. But like I said, those people are broke. Never argue with a broke man. Because it's not in the game. At all, that's it's actually line. more to lose. Double line it's that's more double line to that no. was. It's nothing to gain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're arguing with somebody that's broke. Um, so long story short, of course, super <laughs> political. It's political season for us too. Super respectful. respectfully. Mm -hmm. So just like yo, that was just super dope. And then it's like you know we just going back and forth for over a year, and then uh, you know figuring out like you know best ways to go about it as far as on the legal side to make sure people are secure and then funding and how how you're going to do funding for people that live in america if they buy buying property in ghana very complex situation but we was able to figure it out 300 acres and um we just announced it sambra city which actually means return um so in, in the local dialect so it's like one of these things where it's it's a great networking opportunity to kind of talk to different people and meet different people. That's vitally important. Um, but also I think that it is, um, well, I'm not doing the monologue yet, but I also think that it's important to just, um, always just keep your eyes open and, and be aware of that, like, you know, the, the world is bigger than America. And it's like, y'all keep tripping about this election. It might be time to get away. I, you never know. Telling them, yep. And, and also too, to get away with a lot of criticism, comes a lot of elevation mm -hmm. so if y'all sure. would just be quiet in that little twitter sphere that's, a fact. Not. that's a fact but it, it, there's, there's, there's also a part of it that's very freeing and fulfilling mm -hmm. it's like we can fight for things here right or try to persuade people of things here or we can go to places where we're wanted welcome with open arms right and initiative initiative innovation education is like yo, we actually need the things you provide mm -hmm. right infrastructures right your expertise in some of these places how can we work together rather than saying like oh i gotta find somebody or fight somebody or i gotta sign like all these rules and regulations you gotta go to not that they're not, they don't exist yeah. they exist but when people are willing to work with you it's a totally it's different experience. yeah and the play so the play on this is like we'll talk about this later on we'll probably have an episode but this is not like you have to fully live in ghana this, this Let's keep this is not a charity play. This is a great investment. So this is an opportunity. Like you buying a four bedroom home for three hundred thousand dollars. Let's say like Ghana's real estate has gone up crazy over the last ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Appreciation standpoint, a place to actually go if you want to, you know, get away a couple times a year. The Airbnb opportunities in December alone, crazy. I know people. They yeah. said that they've made their whole mortgage yearly. That. Yep. In in one month, in a couple of weeks, just in December, because people go to December, there's not enough hotels. There's like a million people that come in with like two hotels. And who owns them? The vultures. The Dutch. <laughs> so it's like, oh so yeah. So that so this is this is a business opportunity first and foremost. But I do want to, now we can go to the monologue because I do have something to say about. Hold this. on, hold on. Let me. You call you calling the ISO. That was the ISO. That was the film. Okay. ISO. This is, this is this is something that I noticed. So I do want to actually say something. So this is actually this goes to to Africa. So we, we we announced this project and we announced it. You know, obviously we're doing it in Ghana. We're doing it in Africa. And I noticed something, right? And this is a disturbing trend. So when you do something like we're doing a real estate project, three hundred acres has been announced. The whole thing, right? And you know, a lot of people are positive. Most people are positive, but there's a small segment of the population that is like well um how are you gonna you know house the locals is this going to displace locals obviously it's vacant land right but they're very concerned about the poor citizens of ghana and then there's another one that is overly concerned about like not doing something in America. Like, how are you going to do something in Ghana? You're not doing something in America. They're looking at it like we're doing like a, okay. like this is a disservice charity thing, right? Yeah. 
but this this actually goes to when you close your eyes and you see anything good, you associate that with white people, Santa Claus, whatever, right? You don't look at a black person or black people as any level of success, thriving, whatever. You only look at black people as they need desperate help, they're fucked up, and they're all charity cases because I've never heard any real estate developer that was doing a project in Dubai, that was doing a project in London, in Paris, in New York City. I never heard these concerns. There's poor people all over the world. You've been to the other parts of Paris, you know, that they, they got slums in Paris, right? Absolutely. That overly concern is because you never looked at any part of Africa like these people actually do have money on their own. Like we went to Ghana, they buying their properties in cash. Mm -hmm. their, their credit system is completely different. They don't go into debt like how we go into debt. They get a car, they buy the car in, in cash. Is there poverty in Ghana? Of course. There's poverty in every country in the world, including this one. But psychologically, when you close your eyes, you still look at the Africans as the pot belly person that has flies on their face that you saw in 1990. But that's how you look at yourself also. That's one of the biggest reasons why we are in the situation that we're in, even in America, is white supremacy is bigger than just white people thinking black people are inferior. Black people, nine times out of 10, look at themselves as inferior, even if that they don't vocally say that. Their mindset has been trained to think poverty. Anything attracted with black is poverty or charity. They never look at anything that's attached to black as this is just good business. This is entrepreneurship. This is luxury. This is at the highest level. Those adjectives are not equated with black. Those adjectives are equated with Asian, with Arab, with white. When we equate black, we equate struggle, poverty, charity, all of these things that we equate ourselves. And that's a dangerous mindset because that's a limiting mindset. That's a limiting mindset. And like I said, you never see that in any part of the world, but as soon as a black entrepreneur does anything, only thing that you get is, why didn't you do this? How do you do this? How is this gonna affect that? How is this? 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 You've never even been, you never, you don't even, you're not even fully educated to even speak properly, right? So I just think that that's something that's really dangerous and it's something that, like I said, it's holding us back. We could talk about Donald Trump. We could talk about Harris. We could talk about the Democrats. We could talk about the Republicans. I'm going to be honest with you. None of that's going to matter if you continuously look at yourself and somebody that looks like you as inferior and as somebody that does not deserve to be rich or doesn't deserve to be wealthy. Well played there. You deserve to be rich. You do. And wealthy. And wealthy. Okay. Well said.